<laughs> so this is, uh, the, the book is called American Buckeye, uh, mainly because uh, we had a book uh, on white, uh, white, white bloody goddamn. Yeah. Good things about America, they asked us to write sincere poetry about like, you know, where you're from, what your, your hometown. So I wrote a poem called American Buckeye, and I'm like, aha, genius, boom. Yeah, I, I looked up my city on Wikipedia, it's 96% white. <laughs> I just thought that was an interesting fact. I don't know. <laughs> but it also turns out we're, uh, we're also one of the, the nation's largest test markets. So I was eating like McPizza and like, McRibs and like. Your breakfast pizzas. Oh, yeah, they have breakfast pizzas that Domino's would deliver to your door with a, 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 a box of coffee in a USA Today. <laughs> the crazy thing is, is like you put, if you wanted a breakfast pizza, you'd put a sign that said breakfast pizza on your, on your door. door. <laughs> And they would drive around, oh, there's a breakfast pizza customer. Okay, Could we do that now, do you think, uh, in sure Chicago? Could. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is, uh, so these are just a, a bunch of shit about me growing up and stuff. This is called Wheel Life. <laughs> Tricycle, my first set of wheels. Later I gave it to a Filipino girl named Susu to prove my love for her. Then my mom and her mom got to work out the terms of what I had foolishly done in the name of love. Metal racing car, this beauty had push pedals and was indestructible. Green wooden wagon, was later partially eaten by our first dog, Bootsy. What kind of dog eats wood? <laughs> Huffy green machine, fuck a big wheel. The green machine had skid power. So did my underpants. Because <laughs> when this sweet ride came into my life, the neighborhood kids literally fought each other over the Harley Davidson of the preschool set. <laughs> Two wheel bike, it looked like a motorcycle so I could play chips with the other kids. It was tricked out with a siren and a walkie talkie speaker thingy on the handlebars plus a bitch and banana seat. Red 10 speed, this bike made all the other bikes baby bikes. I was always paranoid someone was going to steal it, and then someone did. Oh well. I also remember having to wrap the handlebars with grip tape all the time, and the chain falling off all the time whenever you switch gears. Why did anybody need 10 gears? I remember the 10th gear being next to impossible to pedal. Also, you couldn't wear <laughs> jeans while riding one of these bikes, and your ass crack it all wet in the rain. Still, everyone had one, so I had to have one too. Silver girly moped, next logical step for all suburban boys, the moped. You had to be 14 years old and had to get a license to drive one of the 35 mile per hour monsters. It taught us to save money for gas, and of course, led to the formation of moped gangs. <laughs> Two days after I got my license, I got a ticket for running a stop sign, but boy, did it make my paper route go by so much faster. I would literally drive up people's, uh, up to people's doors on Sunday morning. Okay, uh, 1978 Orange Buick. This is what I got to drive after my, uh, a deal my dad made with someone at the Chevy plant for a VW bus fell through. Sometimes I think that my entire high school experience would have been completely different if I had that VW bus. I think I would have been more popular for my ability to have transported large groups of people to the mall or sneak a bunch of people into the Captain Kid drive-in, who knows. Maybe our stupid little punk rock band would have toured Ohio still. I lost my virginity in the 1978 Orange Buick, so it has a special place in my heart, leading to this poem the first time. <laughs> it was in the back of my 1975 bright orange Buick. <laughs> she took off her bra and said, it's like opening a Christmas present, isn't it? I said, yes. And then I found out she said the exact same thing to my friend Nick. <laughs> I guess she was really into re-gifting. <laughs>